Hey folks, welcome to tonight's episode of Slinging Dirt Media. Tonight we're sitting down with the uh, safety director uh, from the Lawrenceburg Speedway, Bobby Gump. Um, going to go over a lot of stuff. Tonight's going to be an extremely long video, longer than what we usually do. So we're going to break it up into three different sections. So you'll see a part one, part two, and part three tonight. So uh, stick around, hope you enjoy, and uh, we'll see you at the track this summer, Slinging Dirt. Welcome, race fans. We're back in the garage with Bobby Gump tonight. Bobby, we've got you've got a beautiful place here. I'm, I'm really jealous about this. Thank but you. Uh, so we're gonna get to talk a lot here. We talked about some stuff in the uh, Facebook version. Uh, hopefully, everybody's checked that out. Now they're here on the YouTube channel. And so we're talking about where you started. Yep. Now, before you started, tell me about. Did you go to races a lot when you were a kid? Well. Of course, I don't remember it, but the story that my mom and dad both had told me that my first race, well, I'd went to Lawrenceburg, but my first big race, uh, my dad went to Little 500 in Anderson, which uh, is, in my opinion, the most fantastic race in the world. 33 sprint cars, three abreast for mm -hmm. 11 rows, just like the big 500, um, 500 laps, you know, on a quarter mile, super high bank, blacktop yeah. track. This is, this is your first race. race as a kid five years old okay my mom told my dad that's just stupid you're going to take him to that race halfway home he's going <laughs> to want he's going to tell you he wants to leave and come back yeah well the story my dad said was that halfway home uh, or halfway through the race i said are we coming back next year right and uh i think i made the next 22 to 25 in a row after nice. that without missing it my so, uh, I, I i don't remember this part but my mom mom told me that uh I'm pretty sure this was at Florence or it was Northern Kentucky at the time. Yeah. They was worried about the noise and how it was going to affect me as a kid. We went, whatever. And so I'm like standing in front of mom and just all of a sudden, like in the middle of it, whatever, I'm screaming, hands are flaring, waving. I'm just like, ah, screaming. So she spins around thinking, you know, something's wrong. And I'm just nothing but teeth and just like, oh my God. Oh, yeah. And it's been that way ever since, apparently. Couldn't imagine living without racing i mean you know you have friends and you have family sure that aren't into racing yeah and um they don't understand they, right. i i i've made none of my niece's weddings uh 
you know, this, Ooh. that functions. <laughs> well, I told him, I said, if you want me yeah. to come, you need to get married in the winter. Yeah. You know, uh, majority of racing fans, I'll guarantee you, and race car drivers, they all get married from November yeah. Yeah. to January. <laughs> That's the February. wedding season. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're not going to miss a race. Right. Uh, I, I, there's, there's a couple races that I've missed here and there for something, but it's been very far and yeah. few in between. When I used to help Gary Engel years and years ago, he, he used to always say, don't, don't die and don't get married in the middle of race season because I won't be there. That's right, exactly. <laughs> and, and my family finally learned that. Yeah. You know, they, don't even, they wouldn't even ask sure. me because that's, they knew I wouldn't be there. That's what your world revolves around. Absolutely. So since you brought it up and you said you don't know what you do, I'm going to ask, what, what would you do? You know, so I'm, I know you're heavily in – if there wasn't racing, what would Bobby be doing? You can't work all the time. What do you What do you enjoy doing? What do you, what do you enjoy doing? Well, the one outside? thing is, I couldn't stay here at my house. I told you that earlier <laughs> when we were talking because the thing is, I'm you only five miles from Lawrenceburg, right. and if I was here and I yeah. heard that, it would be like a big magnet. Sure, it would suck sure. me to it. Um, I, I I really don't know. I mean, um, so you don't ski or anything? Is there, no. I mean, there's a ski place right over well, here. Well, definitely, wouldn't be skiing in <laughs> racing season, so <laughs> I don't think that would work out too well. Yeah. I I mean, if I had, I mean, I probably just enjoy staying home yeah. and hanging out with my dogs. Do, do you I mean, hunt, I, I fish, my dogs. anything like that? Don't hunt, don't yeah. fish. Um, I, I used to fish a lot when I was a kid, and then obviously again when I got into racing and got older, it's like I don't have time for it. Or if I'm sitting there fishing, I, I'm feeling guilty, like. I should be doing something else. I've got stuff I need to be doing, you know, just stuff around the house or whatever. Yeah. But I, I have made a, I've done the deep sea fishing a couple of times, and it's like, oh, that's 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 enjoyable. That, well, that's a good time. Racing and working, those yeah. are the two primary things that and I do. And working pays for the the hobby. It pays yeah. for the hobby. Yeah. You know, it it has to because it is a hobby. I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, we're fortunate enough. We've got some really great sponsors that sure. help us. We low love our key. sponsors low key yeah nothing major um and you know um for all the promoters uh rudy is my seventh promoter at lawrenceburg that i've worked for mm -hmm. since the day i had started when i was 12 and so you started working at lawrenceburg when you were 12 yeah and you've been there working ever since yeah did you ever get behind the wheel of a car did you ever desire did no, you I want was smart to? You didn't. No. You didn't drink the Kool Aid. No. I, I, you know, I. <laughs> How do you not do that? I did. You know, we had a street stock. We ran a street stock okay. um, and won the track championship in 1983 with a driver, local driver named Jim, Jim McMillan. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> we had ran that car for 80, 80, 81, 82, 83. Okay. And um, I had drove it around the car, the track a couple of times, right. not in competition. And I actually did get to drive Tom Bipes. He was. Uh, uh, a Lawrenceburg regular um, that started with me in a stock car in 1980, right. and then he graduated up to a sprint car. So I did get to take his car around the track a couple of times uh, at a very slow speed. Slow, okay. Not racing. Ca caution speeds yeah. and stuff. And <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, um, you know, I, I've done about everything that there was to do at Lawrenceburg, but um, – driving was just never one of those hmm. things that i wanted to do i guess i felt if i was driving i couldn't watch the races right, you know? right. you're gonna miss out on yeah. something yeah yeah okay. so I, I really never had that desire to want to drive you hmm. know I, to be able to just take it around the track yeah, at a very was, slow okay. pace you know stomp on it on yeah. a straightaway but at the old berg you did it wasn't much of a straightaway yeah. to jump no, on it was uh, pretty much a circle the uh, who was it the i just had a conversation mm -hmm. with somebody the other day they oh i think it was adam stricker mm-hmm he, I don't think he ever raced on the old Lawrenceburg. Oh, no, he wouldn't have. And I never raced on the new Lawrenceburg. Right. Hi, Shelby. How are you, girl? Hi. <laughs> you want to say hi to people? Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I never got to race on the new Lawrenceburg. I've uh, been there several times and see, seen it raced on, but I n actually never drove on it. Right. Drove on the old Berg, and that was a blast. You yes. know, I, uh, me, and, me and Dave Cook was talking about it. It's like, man, I've had – I've ran better at Lawrenceburg than I have pretty much anywhere else that I've raced, you know, and I've raced some other tracks and stuff, yeah. you know, everything from Lake Cumberland Speedway and Brush Creek, you know, but, you know, I, I ran good there, but yet I hardly ever went there, maybe once or twice a year. Right. Um, well, I do miss the old Berg. I mean, you know, uh, <clears throat> the new I modern facility is fantastic. Yeah. Sure. You know, I mean, and believe me, I understand why racers miss it. I mean, yeah. uh, it, two completely different worlds. Oh, night and day well, you know, yeah. the old berg there was no turn that had the same radius degree of banking right. width 
three was flat at the bottom and yeah. then steep bank like Bristol the last it, it had two character. thirds. <laughs> yeah. And one and two were wide, you know, and, and had a radius to it. Um, it was just a weird track, um, but had tons of good racing. I yeah. mean, I, I still think our racing is great at the Berg now. <laughs> uh, I think our regular Saturday night sprint mm -hmm. car program uh, is second to any race anywhere, whether it's a sanctioned group, USAC, Outlaws, or anybody. Or yeah. We have a nucleus of some guys that have been there for a long time that just really put on a fantastic Saturday night program. Um, but you either love it or you hate it, most yeah. of the guys. You know, if they win it and they, they do okay, they yeah, love it. Yeah, if they, they don't do good, then they good don't stuff. like it, yeah. which is pretty much the same of anybody at any track. So I'm, I'm pretty sure the um, – <clears throat> The last time that I, I mean, I've been out of racing for a few years now. The last time I raced at Berg was in 05. In a modified? Modified. modified. So and who was running? <laughs> who? And that was Jeffy Harris running. And, uh, um, yeah, I, kn I know Spilly was racing. So actually, the, the reason I remember this so well is because I believe you pulled me out of the car. I took a bad, bad hit going down the back stretch. I believe the guy's name was, uh, was it Steve King. Mm -hmm. 71 car yeah yeah so uh it was it was one of the big races like the uh, maybe the big dog Probably the big dog back then. might have been the big dog the week before the <clears throat> world 100 yeah mm -hmm. so i didn't go friday night uh didn't get a qualifying lap or qualifying in so i just went saturday night and tried to see how far i'd race my way in and josh king you know we'd already had plans we we're going to eldora and we we're going up on sunday and camping for the whole week and stuff so uh get there saturday unload and race and doing okay i started like at the tail of the e and race my way into the d and the c and all made it all the way up to the b and was running good like i said i had passed more cars this weekend i feel like i passed in a whole year yeah and so i'm going down the back stretch and just like all of a sudden the car just felt like it was getting loose and just i never felt any contact but the thing just went all the way around like three quarters of the way down the straight away i'm facing the wrong way i was running like fifth i wasn't going to make the show by any means but I was still running good for right. where, where I'd started and everything. Um, so I'm sitting there, and I'm trying to fire the thing up, and I see the leaders. This is when the flagman is still facing the the grandstands. Yeah, He's in the infield looking out. So I see the leaders going through turns one and two. I'm like, all right, fine. They're going to come at me. They'll see me now and just throw the caution. I'm just going to get and pull off. So I'm trying to fire the car up, and they're, they're coming at me. First and second go zoom, zoom. Cool. Then I look up, and I see Spilly. David Spilly, he had lifted and went high, and caution was coming out. Uh, I guess the caution hadn't come out quite quick enough, and Steve was on his right rear hip. So when Spilly lifted and went high, he thought, huh, I'm going to drop down and pass Spilly. He's on the floor with it, and I'm sitting there just, <laughs> man, just head on. And you know, the next thing I wake up, and I'm there like, hey, are you okay? Yeah, like, like, uh, a hit at Eldora I, is yeah. a hit. So yeah. uh, I remember so Jody Shannon <clears> – <throat> He was in the stands, and he, he said you could hear the crunch. He said mm -hmm. that was an uh, impact. He called Josh, and he said, I think your boy's dead. <laughs> and he's like, what? So he, and he said the funny thing about us is they never came on the PA and give any kind of update or anything. And really? I'm like, I'm, I'm good. Just let me breathe. And you guys were like, no, you need to take it easy. Well, it speed, all worked out. The speed differential between yeah. the old Berg and the new Berg, it's, uh, oh, yeah. <clears throat> it's, it's, it's crazy. Uh, I, I still say I would have – Loved to have had the new facility with the old track. The old track, Just yeah. a little bit of changes. You know, I think we could have took it toward the pits, you know, uh, a couple hundred feet and um, and and had all the the amenities that we have now and really so been nice. Spe but, speaking um, of changes, this was this came <clears> up like in the last week or so. Somebody posted like an aerial view of Lawrenceburg. Saw like that. A with the old half mile ago. around the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I, I thought that I had heard at one time, was that the horse track? Yes. This is they car. did race on it. Oh, though. they did race. They did on race it. some cars way before my day. Okay, but they did do some racing. So this on it, kind of clear that up. The people that were talking about it on Facebook and was like, <laughs> well, you know, what was this? Did they ever race on it? I never knew they raced on it. I just would, yeah, was told that that was a horse track. Way so I back thought, okay. when, way back when mm -hmm. we, you know, back working, you know, in the day and you know, in the seventies and the eighties with, you know. Uh, Carol Hamilton and Craig Stevens, and we just called it the half mile. I the mean, the cars mile. would exit off of turn one and come around the half mile and enter the pits yeah. from the backside on the half mile. Huh. Um, so was the pits actually inside of the half mile, or were they still outside at some the point? The pits were inside of the half mile between the half mile and the quarter mile. Okay, okay. Yeah. So like between three, turns three, three and, four. and four and the other yeah. half of the half mile. And the other half. Huh. 
So and it was a long way around. Have you? Had, I don't know if you've ever been down to. Uh, I don't even know if it's still open or not. I think it closed, maybe reopened. I'm not sure if it's open now. It's uh, Thunder Ridge down in Prestonburg, Kentucky. No, never been so there. So they had they had a horse track around, and then they had a stock car track in the middle. Uh, and then, man, this is probably going back 20 something years ago there too. So the pits that we actually pitted on the horse track. So all the haulers would line up on the half mile track around, and then I think you dr you drove around and came on the track like off turn four, kind of like Lawrenceburg does now. Yeah. That's how you got onto the the stock car track. Yeah. In the infield, I always thought that was different. It was weird because you never seen. It's not like you had one designated pit area. It's like the pits went all the way around. The well, place. let me tell you one thing: racing people and yeah. horse people uh, don't agree. Yeah. No. 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 Horse people, if they got. I can remember they used to. There was a guy that uh, had a horse barn. His uh -huh. name was Don Stempson, and he was a big wig in one of the banks down here back in the day. Yeah, and he had horses outside of turn two, <laughs> and it was right where we had to pull the water trucks in to get yeah. water. And uh, he flat hated the racetrack. Really, I mean, had nothing to do with it at all. Um, it just. You know, huh. Of course, his horses. You know, they I didn't like if the it's noise. Just the noise difference. Yeah, he didn't like horse, the horsepower and actual. Yeah, horses. he didn't like the noise. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, you might have the horses, but we got more horsepower, you right, know, than right. what you do. But um, it, it was a weird combination. But the old Berg was just a fantastic place. Uh, <clears throat> you know, like I said, we really do miss it, and we hear comments all the time yeah, about yeah. how much everybody would love man, it. Man, I tell you what, the, that, that new place, man, that's it's that's a, Taj a, it's Mahal. a spectacle. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's nice. <clears throat> and a lot of people probably don't understand that uh, Lawrenceburg Speedway is owned by the city of Lawrenceburg. Right. Uh, you know, they a promoter pays a lease per event. Uh, signs of you know normally a four or five year contract. To I, I've been asked put that. races is, is on there. How, how that all works and stuff. I'm like I'm not 100 percent sure. I said I know that you know now that I'm going to be an employee. Right. I'm like I know that Rudy is partners and they have a lease on the place. That's really all I know. You right. know. Yeah. He he is Rudy, David Rudisell is longest tenure promoter uh, in Lawrenceburg Speedway history. Now he's going to like 15 years. I 15, think. 15. I think we just completed our 15th. This will be okay, his 16th. So 16th coming up. Yeah. Yeah, sixteen for him be yeah. my first. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You got a ways to go. You got. You I got. Know, <laughs> I'm got highest <laughs> tenure, I think, by like thirty five years. You know. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's just a great place to work. Uh, you know, we we have a lot of fun and uh, uh, couldn't imagine any place else right. being weekly. I mean, I Kokomo is by far probably my favorite track. Okay. Uh, we get along really good with the O'Connors. We have a very good relationship with most of the tracks that we work yeah. with. I, I know you guys um, came out to Molar on with occasion Moeller. when we yeah. had the sprints out there. So I knew we've got them a few mm -hmm. times out there this year. I think probably twice as much as we had them last year, which yeah. is probably. I think they're uh, most of the uh, the 360s mm -hmm. and I think a steel block series. I know yeah. I don't think Boss or Fast are back. I think there's this like year, a. I don't is think. There, is there a D? D two D two midgets. You yes, we. I think midgets. we have those. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, th this car's really. They put on a really good show out there. That little. They that, do. That track is just. It races well, really well. It's a great race for Boss. Uh, mm -hmm. Aaron Fry does a fantastic yes. job with the Boss Sprint Car Series. Just fantastic. Um, you know they pay mm -hmm. pay good money, and uh, the great thing about Boss is it's a it's the most awesome series to take into stock car territory. Like I know they've ran Richmond yeah. and. You know, their car counts have been pretty good, where if USAC carried to Richmond, uh, you know, they'd probably be lucky to have 15 cars. Right. But, uh, you know, uh, Boss has been able to carry, you know, almost 25 to mm. areas like that, West Virginia. Now, this is uh, going to be another education for me as well. And I like I had said in the Facebook that I'm – I, I guess I've just grown up more around the late models, so I don't know as much about the sprints. Right. Willing and, you know, nothing against them, but, hey, I'm willing to learn. I mean, I, they, they do. They put on a great show, and I enjoy them just as much as anything else. Um, now, there's one that's a – is it the boss that has the Buckeye series and an Indiana series, is, or is that, that's, is that a different one I'm thinking of? Uh, I think you're thinking of the race savers. That's it. That's it. Because I think they're we have a, an event. They're a 305 we, win yes, deal, and yes. that is at Moeller. Yes, yes, we have Actually, that. both of them. Jerry King has it, or Josh King. Oh, really? Has one at yeah, Florence. Yeah, yeah. It's See, on our night of destruction, which is uh, during Indiana Sprint Week. Okay. Because the, the, the tracks that run within Indiana Sprint Week are not allowed to run a sprint car event against 
Sprint Week. Sprint Week. So okay. um, the final is at Hobstad Evans it, at Hobstad at Evansville, Indiana. Tommy okay. Heffrich's track down there, and so we can't run against it. So we Tommy have Night Heffrich. of Destruction. That yeah. name sounds real familiar. Wow. See, late old, model, late guy. model guy, the, oh, se- yeah. the seventy-one car. Yeah. Really, I didn't know Absolutely. he had a track now. Oh, I tell huh. you what, we Hobstadt is—they uh, call it the class track, and okay. it's it, it's very easy to see once you're there. Why? Um, we got the opportunity to work there. We did some work with their fire department that works down there. Um, they had a pretty bad fire down there two years ago, which was just before our fall nationals at Lawrenceburg for okay. USAC. And uh, had a pretty lengthy conversation with uh, Spridge and Levi Jones from USAC. Uh, and they got us hooked together through that winter uh, with the Hobstadt Fire Department that provides their, their uh, safety there at the track. And, and just became great friends with the guys. Right. Um, uh, a couple of the guys will work when we work Terre Haute. They'll come up and work mm-hmm. Terre Haute with us. And we uh, finally got the opportunity to go work Hobstadt this year. Okay. Uh, the Harvest Fall Classic at the end of the year. It's like the second week of October. And it reminded me of the old Lawrenceburg. After the race was over, it's their final night. Um, they have a band in the pits. Everybody sits around mm. and drinks some beverages. Uh, everybody makes cookies and hot dogs right. and chili. Uh, we ended up getting back to the hotel, and we only stayed five <laughs> minutes from the track at 4 o'clock in the morning. Oh, nice. And we vowed to never miss another race at Hobstadt. I may, um, may have to, I may have to uh, stick a thumb out when, oh, when you guys boy. are going that uh, way. Fantastic event. USAC Midgets uh, with wing mini sprints and MSCS sprint cars, which is Tommy Heffrich's own series. Runs okay. primarily... At Hobstadt, but right. they run Lincoln Park, uh, Bloomington. Now, um, how, how long tracks. has he had that place? Is it? Oh my gosh, as long for as, as long I've time. known. Really? Yeah. Huh. You know, he's a farmer. Okay. And uh, I just, I just remember the name and the pictures and stuff. I mean, when yeah. Eldor, when I was a kid, I remember him running in, you know, a couple of the World 100s. Well, he back then, you know, you know, he was uh, Jim Dunn was killed at Paducah. Okay. Remember, he burned yep. up in a car, Jim Dunn. Yep. And uh, Tom was actually there. Really? And witnessed it and saw it. Oh. <clears throat> and we had a conversation in the infield the night we were down there about that. He said, you know, I can close my eyes and still see that. Yeah. So, and when I say nobody gets allowed to work Hobstot, nobody works Hobstot. He uses all of his own people. He has his Right. I mean, we, we bring in outside push trucks, and we have USAC, World of Outlaws. You know, I've got friends that push from Bloomington, Indianapolis area, and they all come. Hobstot uses their own trucks, their own people, same people, day hmm. in, day out, week in, week right. out. Right, they've got a routine and they know what routine, they're doing. Routine, everybody yeah. is the same, nobody comes in and out. And for Tommy Heffrich to give us the opportunity to come down there and work, uh, yeah. I was tremendously impressed. Sure. And, uh, you know, we got along great. He saw what we brought to the table, and we have an yeah. open ticket to come back anytime we well, that's, want. That's awesome. So. You know, I, it's, it's good when you have um, – you know, promoter that's so heartfelt and so deeply in it. It's like, hey, this is there's a certain way that I want this handled, and this yeah. is exactly how I want it. You know. Well, and that's you know, the main reason why on the side of our equipment it says Lawrenceburg Speed Speedway Fire Rescue is because that's our home. That's right. That's that's where we get paid the most. Rudy Rudy takes care of us very well, um, but we do venture out a lot. We do. Almost as many, yeah, when we're not running, we're here every night that we run here. But we probably do as many shows away from Lawrenceburg as we do at Lawrenceburg. Oh, really? Yeah. (laughs) And so, yeah, last year we did 47 races. Wow. Um, So some promoters, that Lawrenceburg Speedway aside, they could care less. Right. Um, uh, The O'Connors at Kokomo being one of them, they said, you know, you're here to take care of our guy. You know, our guys make our program run better. We don't care what it says on the side. And And I know that's exactly how Pickleheimers, they they feel it at at Um, Molar. You know, hey, that's – we're happy that you guys are here. We we know when people people see that they yeah. know what's there. They yeah. know what to expect. Josh at Florence has been yes. really good with that. Like I said, Kokomo, um, you know, a lot of other tracks. We've done a lot of work at North Vernon. Uh, do a lot of work with Mason Fleetwood on the No Way Out 40 that is switched to Perrigan, Indiana, on March 19th against the Icebreaker at Brownstown. Oh, so, okay. Interesting yeah. turn of events there. Yeah. As of yesterday. Yeah, I, see, I, see, I, seen the, I seen the Facebook update on that yeah. yesterday. So, um, 
And then we got some promoters that said, if you think I'm letting you in my track because it says Lawrenceburg on the side of it, that ain't happening. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't happen much, but right. normally once we get into a place, we're good because the first thing we do when we roll into a place is I go find their crew and I tell them, we're not there to do your job. We're right. there to do our job together. Sure. And we will work together. And, uh, you know, normally after the first event, um, I've got everybody's cell phone numbers and we're texting right. each other back and forth and we're friends and we're buddies because we're all there for the same reason. Right. And that's 90, Your side 85% of, it, you of the places see that. leave the way they came in. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So this this year, obviously, I'm going to be new to the program at Lawrenceburg, and you know, I'm definitely not trying to reinvent the wheel or anything like that. But it's like, man, I've got to figure out how do I fit in that program. You know, that's well, you know, the biggest thing that you've got to learn, right? No. Is that when sprint cars stop on a racetrack, <laughs> they don't drive off. Yeah, we got to yeah. go get them. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I've learned that. We at Molar, we've we've had him a few times there. Yeah. So I mean, uh, um, Al Carrier, he's yeah, he, he runs. No, Al very well. Great. Yeah, guy. Al. We have Marty. Yeah. Uh, Al has been great with helping me. Like, hey, this is how we need to do this. And it's like, okay, cool. You know, and it's just it's getting used to a routine and something different. You know, like yeah. you know the late models and stock cars completely different. So it's when I knew that i was making the transition or coming to lawrenceburg it's like okay this my biggest thing is is you guys already have a well-oiled machine that runs like it should and we really do i mean we our nucleus of employees you know have been there mm -hmm. especially with with rudicell with david that uh you know most of them have been there for his full tenure right um and you know it, it takes a while for us to get that bond with the flagman um and Tim. and Tim is fantastic. Tim, Tim is good. Uh, yeah. And it takes us a, a few years to get that continuity. I mean, yeah. he knows if we're on the track and I yell to my guys, get your lights off, he knows that we're ready to go. Sure. And he knows he can give them one lap signal to go the next time around. And and, and we learn how to read him, too. Um, you know, it, it it's a thing where we all got to work together. And, right. And it – when you go to other, when you go to some other tracks, and I'm not going to mention where, nowhere <laughs> around here, close, but when you go to some tracks and you and you hear their radio chatter oh. and you <laughs> see they're they're just not on the same page, they're right. not continuity is not right. in the orders, and you, man, you think, oh, I can't wait to get back home because yeah. Yeah. you know we we've all been together so long. Uh, my guys, we have our own radio s communication system with all mm -hmm. of my guys. Uh, nobody, I am the only one that is in cum communication with the track. Okay. So those guys don't need to hear all that. They right. need to get the command from me as far yeah. as what to do, where to go, when to be there. And, and that's something we do at Molar. It's like, you know, because there's other things going on and other people that have radios. It's like, look, right. the race controls need to be on this channel. Everybody else needs to be on this channel. So yeah. that way... Yeah, you don't We're need your concession not, employees exactly, hollering that they're out exactly. of hot dogs when you're trying to right, yeah. get the lineup yeah. in order and, in the future. And, and that's that's helped a lot. And, yes. and you know, that they, they've been great about working with it and stuff like that. So uh, you know, like I said, it's like you guys have a perfectly well oiled machine and that thing runs like it should. Sometimes so, it don't look like it does. It may not look like it. But so it I've just gotta figure does. out my place in the cog and how, how it goes around. Our announcer's <laughs> a little sketchy sometimes. <laughs> Chad Cuttingham. Uh, sometimes I've, I don't know how to take him. But yeah. No, I've, I'm kidding. I've Love heard Chad that guy. to death. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know that I heard the two of you had a conversation uh, uh, last week the, uh, leading up to this, you know, about saying that you know he better when he's coming down to my place for an interview he better bring his pillow because uh yeah uh, him and rudy like to uh jab me a lot for speaking during the merrill downey but um uh you know that's kind of my event and uh, my baby and you know we have a lot of people put up a lot of money and sure. you've got to mention their name so sure sometimes so, and they know that they know that i gotta say uh, okay, that. okay i got this question so for the merrill downey who, who's the race director for that? Do, do you do the race director for that? Or? Well, no, you still do it, but okay. I tell you what to do. Okay. No, <laughs> <laughs> no the Merrill Downey is a fantastic event. It's, uh, you know, uh, we fortunately, uh, you know, we're lucky enough to know Merrill very well. Mm -hmm. We raced our street stocks against Merrill. And right. He was one of those guys he'd beat and bang you on a racetrack, but when he got back in there, if it was a heat race, he'd be the first guy over to help you get your car back together for the event. Right. For the main event. Uh, a fantastic guy. I, I really, at that point in time, I didn't know any of his family members. And um, I can remember being at his funeral in Osgood, Indiana. 
And uh, I told his son, I said, listen, I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to do something. Yeah. And that was two weeks prior uh, to the 4th of July weekend. And uh, a couple of us put the first Merrill Downey together in that time period. Uh, Devin Gilpin was the mm-hmm. first winner. And uh, I do believe the event only paid 1200 to win. And uh, we had such an easy time of collecting the money for the event lap sponsors right uh, even at that time i think our lap sponsorships at that point were only 25 dollars, and we only ran 25 laps so i told rudy i said hey i'm going to make an announcement tonight for the merrill downey for next year and he says what's that and i go we're going to pay 4444 to win he goes are you stupid and i go yeah probably <laughs> and 44 dollars a lap right and uh Boy, I said that, and then a couple of weeks after that, I thought, oh, my gosh, what, what did, did I, I do? What did I do? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it went very, very well. Um, and you and, still still have it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we just, this past year, we ran our 10th annual, and uh, we paid $10,444. What's, what's the sponsorship per lap now? Uh, still $44 still a lap. Still 44 Still okay. 44 a lap. Uh, but we did make a change. Uh, we are off of the $4,444. Uh, Talked to... Uh, you know Nick Hoffman and some of right. those guys that run the Hell Tour that we're normally sure. going against. Uh, fortunately, the American Modified Series Association realized that we probably should yeah. not run against the Merrill Downey, right? Which is, is good for their guys because you sure. don't want to take a guy you know that is running for the points mm-hmm. for the American Modified Series and and have him not have the opportunity to, right. for a very good payday for the it's, Merrill Downey. It's not good for anybody when there's – I'm not going to say competition is not good for people, but when it comes to, like, races and scheduling and stuff like that, it it doesn't help the drivers. It doesn't help the promoters when they're scheduling conflicts Absolutely. like that. That's not Absolutely. good competition not. there. And like I said, you know, you would hate to have a guy leading your points and he's got to be at a place to run for 1500 mm-hmm. where he could run for 10000 to win. Right. Now, that's great – money yeah um and i i just love the event uh, i'm not a and i'm not knocking lucas oil or any of the late model deals i don't like starting fast qualifier on the front row and i yeah. don't do it at the merrill downey and i said yeah. if you're gonna earn this race you're gonna earn it. if you're, you're gonna, gonna win it. this race you're gonna if you're earn the it. fastest car you're gonna it's gonna shift fast qualifier starts outside row two hmm. you know if, okay. if you can't you only got to advance you only got to finish in the top yeah. three to advance into the event and uh you know, every year it's normally been a pretty good race. Uh, pretty proud of this past year's event. Right. Uh, as far as from what I can hear from people, we were the third highest UMP car count in the country last really? year. Really? Yeah, we had 87 so are cars. You, are you still taking sponsors for the, for the laps, or do you have them all full already? Well, we normally fill up our lap sponsorship every year. Yeah. Uh, the 10,444 was picked up by Tempstar Heating and Cooling Products, uh, mm-hmm. Cork and Steel out of Covington, uh, Kentucky this year. They've always been a sponsor and helped us majorly. Right. And I had the conversation with the owner um, probably about the 7th or 8th annual, and I told him what my idea was for the 10th. And I said, I'll probably need a little bit of extra help on that event, you know, yeah. to pay the 10444 So, um we had had our, our, our delivery driver from there, you know, had been with the company for about 26 years, had retired mm-hmm. uh, about two months prior to the Merrill Downey. And so uh, that was the first conversation that I'd had with Jeff Corkin about the, 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 the increased payout. So I told him, I said, yeah, I remember when I told you about, you know, the 10th annual? And he goes, yeah. He said, is that this year? And I go, yeah. And he goes, so you need a little extra help, right? And I go, yeah, I do. <laughs> well, what do you got in mind? I said, Jeff, I, I can't give you a number. I just, right. you know, you kind of know what you've always done for me. Um, so you need the 10000 right? And I go, I am not going to ask you for $10,000. But that's what you need, right? And I said, well, we got to come <laughs> up with it. Some guy another, went yeah. in his office and wrote out the check and gave it to really? him. Really? Uh, just fantastic company. Yeah. Uh, and um, that's awesome. for him to do that. And so uh, we're pretty well sure they're going to be the title sponsor from okay. here on out. But we did jump to 5,444 to win every year. Okay. Uh, still uh, second place, runs at about 2,500. Yeah. Uh, and it's 444 to start. It's a fantastic payout. It's right. a great payout. Well, I, I and was tons just... of lap sponsors and yeah. other incentives, best appearing car. Heck, last year, um, Kyle Steffens okay. from St. Louis area. Yeah. He – 
got the hard charger award and i think it was almost 750 bucks hmm. he couldn't believe it yeah couldn't believe it you know hmm. he had said this is an I event just, that i will make from now we, on we, wheels are spinning i'm just thinking maybe we'll talk something something off the air maybe we might can get a sling and dirt media i something have on absolutely there, no problem with that <laughs> No problem. We'll, Believe we'll, me. We'll talk about this. I might sell 64 <laughs> laps, but I find places to put it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And last year, you know, we really thought, uh, real quick, I we really thought that, boy, we were going to really have a hard time yeah. collecting because we did pay more mm -hmm. in, down the line even. Yeah. And a lot of that we do, that's not always track money. That's, yeah. you know, sponsorship money. And uh, we probably had the easiest year we ever had. Really? It was a breeze. Hmm. So I know, I mean, just like I said, I mean, I'm, we're we're trying to get the word out there and get the the sling and dirt media out there, and we're trying to cover a little bit of everybody. You know, we've talked to a, a legend driver. I've got a couple of uh, compact guys. I've already talked. Your to Your legend them. guy ain't Pierce Foster, is it? No. Uh, now Pierce is one. I tell you what, if you I want an be, entertainment, I will be talking to Pierce. I've known Pierce, Pierce is for, a guy to, enter, yeah, to entertain. Yeah, I've known Pierce for a long time. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, there there will be a conversation. And at some point, Pierce's name will, will be on the table.